Hello and welcome to Yahoo Finance Live. I'm Andy Serwer and I'm here with U.S. Secretary of Labor, Marty Walsh. Mr. Secretary, nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me today. So the March jobs report just crossed the tape less than 90 minutes ago, your first one, and it looked pretty good with the economy adding 916,000 non-farm payroll jobs. What's your main takeaway from this morning's jobs? You know, it's an encouraging sign today, uh, but we certainly have more work to be done here. Uh, we still have, you know, the unemployment rate is 6%. We still have almost 8.5 million Americans out of work. The unemployment rate in the black communities over is 9.6%. Uh, so we still have a lot of work to do here, uh, and it's something that we look forward to. But it also shows that a competent vaccination plan is working and good economic policy, that they're showing encouraging signs to be working. So it's putting faith and a little bit of faith back into the American worker uh, and, and to companies to bring people back to work and get people back working in. Yeah, you mentioned the black unemployment rate, Mr. Secretary, and I'm wondering, you know, if you're concerned about these kinds of specific facets, the unemployment rate for women, labor force participation. Are you worried about people just dropping out of the workforce and for to return? I'm not necessarily worried about people dropping out of the workforce. What I am concerned about is, as far as uh, black people and people of color, is opportunities for people to get jobs. I mean, I, I spent the last seven years as mayor of Boston, and any time we talked about unemployment, we would whatever the unemployment rate was, we would double it for communities of color, in particular black, Latino, uh, the black and Latino community. Uh, and that's always been a problem. That's a challenge. And in, in, the, in the American Jobs Plan, President Biden intends to address some of that. Uh, and I think that it's important that we think about as we move forward, how do we close that gap? We did see a little bit of gap closing between the unemployment rate for, for men and women this particular month, which was good, which we're seeing more women go back into the workforce. But we still have work. There's still a lot of work to do in this country. You mentioned some of uh, President Biden's work and there's uh, the American Rescue Plan um, that we're looking for here. And as that gets enacted, as well as the infrastructure bill, if that can get passed, what do you expect the impact of those initiatives to be? Well, I think that the, the American Jobs Plan that, that was unveiled in Pittsburgh on Wednesday, uh, there's a lot of opportunity in that bill. Obviously, infrastructure, crumbling infrastructure all across America, something that we have to work on. Uh, climate change and, and resiliency projects, there's water projects in that, and, and changing outlet pipes broadband infrastructure all across America that's really important. The CARES economy and caregiving economy, uh, where we have lots of people of color working in that industry and bringing that industry back. Uh, so, and then we have workforce development and job training program uh, investments as well. Those, 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 those projects and those proposals that the president has put forth will actually help us build back stronger, build back better as a, as a country and get more people opportunities to get into the middle class. So the question you had asked me previously about people dropping out of the workforce, the plan of this American Jobs Plan is to actually f get the people who are out of the workforce, get them back into the workforce and create real opportunities that are good paying, good jobs for the future. President Biden said there should be, quote, no intimidation, no anti-union propaganda of workers. Mr. Secretary, you were a union member and a union official for many years. Did Amazon's recent anti-union campaign, do you think that was appropriate? And what circumstances would you have, would have to arise for you to get involved? Well, I think everyone, everyone in this country should have the right to join a union if they feel they want to join a union. And everybody who has an opportunity to, to take a vote on that should have that right to take a vote. vote. And I think that in the Amazon situation, we're going to see uh, in the next, I think the next few days what the, what the result of the vote is. Uh, but, but I definitely think that you know, there should be no intimidation when somebody wants to, to join a union. To, to, if, they, if, they, if the workers feel they want a union, they should have that opportunity to be able to, to, be able to vote on, and, and, and putting a union in their, work, in their workplace. And that's how I feel. I mean, I think that that's something uh, that the, and, and workers might take the take the opportunity to vote for union. Some workers might take the opportunity not to vote for union. Uh, but but I think that anti-union rhetoric really doesn't help. Have you given much thought yet? And I know it's still early for you. What is it, about eight days in for you, Mr. Secretary? Right. <laughs> um, have you? Yeah, given it's much eight, thought eight, eight working days, eight working days. Right. Exactly. Have you given much thought um, about gig workers for companies like Uber and Lyft and whether they should be classified as contractors or employees? 
No, you know, I've had many conversations now in the Department of Labor over the last two weeks. This is my second week as the secretary. Uh, we've, we've talked about, have conversations around the gig workers. We've talked about unemployment insurance. We've talked about pensions. We've talked about OSHA. So there's lots of work to be done here at the United States Department of Labor. And I look forward to as we, as we move forward here. I'm not going to make any, any type of knee-jerk reactions and put policy that's not strong policy out there. So we're going to take our time to move, as we move forward here. There's, there's still lots of work to be done here. And so what is at the top of your priority list, Mr. Secretary? Well, in the American Rescue Plan, the president allocated uh, $2 billion for UI uh, to look at UI and reform U the UI system. That's one of the our top priorities here. Also, OSHA. Uh, we're about 500 inspectors short of what we need to, to, to have in OSHA to make sure that American workers are safe and protected. So we're going to be making investments in OSHA. Uh, obviously, a little down the road, when I say down the road, I'm, I'm talking in the next probably month or so, looking at the pension system and working on the pension systems in our country and strengthening those. Uh, and, and quite honestly, right now, top of mind is making sure that the American Jobs Plan gets passed. Uh, we need to go out, spend time talking about it, letting people understand what the plan is and, and, and how this plan is going to help the American worker and bring people to the middle class. So that's really probably my, my, one of my, they're all top priorities, I suppose. I can't pick one over the other, but that's one, one at the very top of the plan right now. With the vaccines continuing to roll out, Mr. Secretary, do you anticipate even better job reports in the months to come? Well, that's the that would be that would be the assumption here that that uh, you know the more uh, vaccines we get in people's arms and the more vaccine availability out there and you know a lot has happened in the president's first uh, sixty plus days I think it is almost seventy days he's well over a hundred million vac vaccinations out there uh, the goal I think now is to get another hundred million pretty quickly out to people uh, those are first and second shots uh, and some of those are one one shot so. The more vaccines we can get out there, uh, there's a good plan across this country to get vaccines into, into people uh, all across this country. And I encourage people that are watching today to get vaccinated, uh, get vaccinated, because the, the, it's overwhelming uh, support of, of, of the effectiveness of the vaccines and, and keeping people safe and, quite honestly, keeping you safe and, and your family safe and, and, and all of that. There's too much loss of life. We've lost too many Americans, too many people, quite honestly, in the world we have lost due to due the COVID-19. And, and we need to stop that trend. Final question, Mr. Secretary. Does the U.S. need things like a permanent expansion of unemployment benefits or universal basic income for workers to help impact workers uh, adjust, I should say? Say that one more time. Sorry, you, you broke up on me there. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, does the U.S. need a permanent expansion of unemployment benefits or universal basic income to deal with the current situation? I mean, I, I think that we have to take a look at everything. Everything is on the table. But I think at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's about it's about a job report like today where 916,000 Americans have gone back to work. We need to continue to get people back into the workforce, get people back working. We have to all across levels. I mean, in today's report, there were some encouraging signs. Uh, and, and then there's also some signs we, we just need to continue to work hard every single day to get Americans back to work. And then we also get to get them into good paying jobs. So they're not relying on unemployment systems. That's something I mean, obviously, with COVID, you know, thank God the unemployment system was here because we kept people fed, we kept people alive. But ultimately, the, the president's goal and our goal at the Department of Labor is to get people back into the workforce. U.S. Secretary of Labor, Marty Walsh, thank you so much for your time, sir. Thanks for having me. And stay tuned here uh, on Yahoo Finance later today as President Biden uh, talks about the jobs report coming up at 11 a.m.